What's up everybody, I'm Derek, this is Rocking eForge, and today I'm going to be getting back to a video from the archives of when I was living in California, and that is going to be forging a camp knife out of submarine hull steel. Now the background for this project is that I am a submarine officer by trade, and one of my friends from my first boat actually sent me a piece of hull cutting from the USS Ohio, which he asked me to forge into a display piece knife for him in kind of commemoration of his time in the submarine force and to celebrate making chief petty officer. Now, very unfortunately and very sadly, that piece of steel was lost in the mail before it got to me, and I simply received an empty box. Now, I managed to find a couple of connections, actually up here in Washington State, who were able to get me this piece of the USS Narwhal, SSN 671, a US submarine that was commissioned in 1967 and active during the later years of the Cold War. Now, with the snafu of the shipping issues behind me, I was able to start this project about a year ago, and I was able to make pretty substantial progress on forging this blade out before I actually had to move to Connecticut and then move again to Washington. So I am finally back in the shop. I'm going to be showing you a lot of archived footage from the progress that I made in California for part one of this video. And we're going to be getting into the actual grinding of the blade, the grinding of the bevels, and the putting on a handle and everything in part two of this video series. And I am very excited to get back into this project and finish this knife up for that good friend of mine. Now it's been about a year since I started this project and as such I'm going to be showing you a lot of archived footage from my time in California. And the first thing that I'm going to be doing is taking this piece of steel and cutting off a slice of it using my portable bandsaw. So without any further ado and discussion, let's get into it and let's get rocking. Seems to be doing okay. Side note, I hope it is now apparent that I have an offset blade hacksaw now that I think about it. But side note, I hope it's now apparent why a standard hacksaw wouldn't quite work here, because uh, I can't cut any further. All right, so I've got this piece of steel now all ground to a decent enough finish to start forging on. A couple of spots where the blade wandered while I was cutting this that would have ended up causing cold shuts and cracking later on. So I ground those out and I ground down a majority of the high spots on this laser cut or plasma cut edge just to minimize any potential cracks that could grow in the forging process so that now I can throw it in the forge and start hammering on it without having too much worry. All right, so I'm gonna make sure this is straight. Now, this is gonna be one heavy piece of steel to forge out. But my goal is to follow kind of this line and do kind of a recurve buoy or recurve camp knife out of this. So first thing I'm gonna do is forge in the clip. Now, some of these spots are gonna be really tough to avoid cold shuts. So as I go, I'm gonna be grinding out little spots here and there, especially this big pocket. I didn't wanna grind all the way in there, but as I forge things out, it's definitely gonna be a problem. We're just gonna keep going one heat at a time. It's gonna take quite a while, so this might be a couple weeks before I put this video out. <laughs> So I'm going to forge in as much as I can before I cut it and then we'll start lengthening and spreading the blade. Now you can tell this blade is still extremely thick and the 
because I'm uh, working on the preform of the blade itself. Shifting the material to where I want it to be. Once I'm ready to start actually forging out the blade's shape. After reviewing the designs that I've gone over with the customer, he actually kind of wants more of a straight-backed recurve camp knife. So I am extending this clip, so to speak, way back. But this whole knife obviously has to skinny down. I'm gonna make it about a quarter inch thick, and I'm about a half inch. So I've got a quarter inch of material to skinny down, which will end up lengthening and spreading, depending on how I hit it with my hammer. So my goal, when I go to forge in this bevel is to just have this pseudo clip push back. As the steel spreads here along the edge, it'll push that clip kind of backwards. And hopefully I'll end up with a fairly flat shape along the spine and that any deviations from that, I can pretty easily just hone in with the hammer. So far it's coming along. It's a lot of steel to move. I decided to make this pretty hard on myself, but I knew with the width as skinny as it is, I was gonna need quite a bit of thickness to draw it, draw it out to the width that I need. So I will probably end up cu cutting that off just a tad, but every, every inch that I get for that taper gives me another inch in length that I can use later. So we're getting there. So I'm fresh off the lessons learned of the HY80 Sanmai video, where I learned that if I don't forge for width, I'm not gonna get it. I'm gonna use the cross peen pretty extensively before I start really focusing on the shape here. And I can do a lot of grinding to shape as long as I get the knife to the right width. So this is what I've currently got brainstormed. Just a nice big camp knife chopper, whatever you wanna call it. Gonna have a brass or steel guard. Might do an HY80 guard for this just to keep with the theme, so to speak. I'm trying to get two and a half to three inches of belly here in the forward half of the blade and kind of taper it back to about two inches here at the Ricasso. While that's going to look maybe a little awkward, this knife is going to be for display only, so there's not much point in allocating a ton of steel in what I have to the tang. So I'm just gonna make it a pretty small hidden tang do a nice wood handle and then I'm going to inlay into the handle a uh, set of silver dolphins for the chief petty officer that this knife is going to. And that's why I am forging primarily for width right now because I can get the rest of the shape by a combination of forging and grinding as long as I can get three inches of width out of it. And I've got about an inch and a half of width at the widest point there toward the tip, and it's about a half inch wide. So I'm thinking I can get it down to about a quarter, maybe a little less than a quarter inch thickness in order to get that nearly three inch width. drawn this out, I only need to get it to two and a half inches. And that I think is a bit more doable. So we're gonna keep working on it. I'm gonna work, work my way down the length and make a decision on whether or not I need more width as I go. Well, my hammer hand's been bit about four times now by the scale flying off of this thing. And make that seven. Ow. That's two and a quarter here. I don't mind getting a little under a quarter inch. I think so far so good. Forging in the bevel will help me get a bit more spread. I do need to worry about this little cold shut, looks like it might be starting to grow, so I need to grind that out. Gotta keep moving my way down, but so far so good. Doesn't look like much so far, but I'm kind of liking it. I might just leave this as the spine 
and do obviously some grinding to clean up the actual spine. So far it's shaping the way I want it to, but in the opposite direction of what I'd expected. But little victories, you know? Take them how you get them. So I need to widen about one more inch, and then I should be able to easily forge out a stick tang with whatever I've got left. But it's starting to shape up, and I'm liking the way it's going. Just under two and a half. Now granted, a lot of that is gonna go away, but I should also be able to get a decent amount of spread by forging in the bevels. I need to get more spread down here. I need this to about two inches, but I'm at three eighths of an inch thick, so I still got a little ways I can go. Now this, all of this lumpy stuff is also gonna get eaten up by having to be ground off, so I need to consider that too. But. So far, so good. It's about 10 inches. And so far, it's shaping up similar to what I've got drawn out. I'm considering, with this little kind of bump out, considering doing a big clip on the spine of the knife, but we'll see as we go. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna forge the bevels in on the lumpy end, using the rounding head of my rounding hammer to get as much spread as possible. Now this is gonna be a challenge, and I'm gonna end up with an absolutely ridiculous looking edge here. I've got it at a quarter inch on the spine. I'm gonna try to get it down to about maybe an eighth inch on the bevel. I'm gonna work that back into the blade as much as I can while trying to maintain a flat section because I want the bevels to be distinguishable. Something else I need to do also is establish the point where the blade is gonna transition and push as much of that blade forward as I can. I'm gonna do a lot of grinding along this edge to get rid of all of the bumps and the awkwardness, but I wanted, because I had that clip going down, I wanted to forge, forge the bevels in that direction and make sure that everything shaped up the way I wanted it to. That's super even heat. <laughs> We're getting some shape. I don't want to go too far up on the flat, so to speak, because I want distinguishable bevels once I'm done forging everything in. So I'm hoping I can get the shape into where I want it without having to forge way up to the spine. Now before I go too crazy with the bevel here, I'm just gonna step this off. Try to establish that as the actual start to the spine here. And it's just highlighting to me there's a lot of, a lot of weird awkwardness that I've gotta work through. That's going to establish the ricasso area of my blade. And I'm gonna come in with the cross peen and draw that further out this direction. Because it needs to move that way. This sway back might be something that messes me up pretty quick. But I intend to have it be super, super wide up here and taper back to that ricasso. So it might be all right. We just gotta keep working with it. getting there. It's a little awkward because I'm bouncing it back and forth from either side. All right, I'm gonna try to work out this sway back I got going on. Just 
fortune on the edge here. And it's going to be the edge to try to even that out. Seems like it's doing an okay job. I think it's a bit better than it was. This is frustratingly not bending. It's a good thing this is a mild steel because it lets me forge a lot harder, a lot colder. Might be closing in. It may not quite look like my original drawing, but it's getting close. Much closer than I bet you think I am. <laughs> Gotta keep going. Trying to get this to straighten out. It's slow going. I came to the realization I'm gonna have to grind all of this edge off anyway, just to get the profile not so gross. So I'm gonna try to get as much spread out of the edge as I can to straighten everything out here. We're starting to get straighter. I'm gonna focus on evening out this blade. which will hopefully give me a little extra spread in places. I'm gonna try to get some more out of that heel. That bevel is off, kicked off to one side. I need to straighten that out a bit. it too awful much but it's better than it was to revisit that's what I'm trying to get to it's certainly not gonna end up perfect but I think we're getting okay now I got to figure out how to get the curve in there all right we're gonna see how well this works <laughs> it actually works really well I've seen people do that with kukris, and I wanted to try it myself because it works really great. <laughs> that eliminates a lot of grinding I had to do on the spine. I'm gonna even things up along the spine a little bit better because it's pretty wonky. But all things considered, we're going in the right direction. Well, that actually worked. <laughs> All right, I think I'm pretty well done with the blade forging wise. So now I've moved on to forging down the Ricasso area. Cause I want to get that close to flat with the spine. Now my blade's all wonky, but that's okay. Not leaving a ton of material for the tang there. <laughs> I 
All right, so I'm gonna get into forging out the tang for this knife. I'm not sure why I didn't do it before uh, refining the profile, but it's looking pretty nice and uh, there's not as much potential for cracking here now that I've ground out all of that rough, all of that rough edge there. All right, that's about a six and a half inch tang there that I drew out just from the material that was here left over. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. I've got this neck down here in the Ricasso area for the fit up of a guard. And then I'm going to be using a piece of ebony for the handle, which will be a through tang. And I intend to make some sort of butt cap for this and we'll get into that in the next video. Alrighty, I'm just gonna lock this in the vise, let this cool down, and then I'm gonna get to the kind of grinding portion in part two of this video series. So, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you wanna support me in the channel further, please consider becoming an honorary striker on my Patreon. That link is in the description below the video, or please consider becoming a member on my YouTube channel. And as always, keep on rocking.